The Hawaiian Islands are an amazing place on this planet. Um, 2,500 miles away from any other continent, we're isolated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And, and yet we're high islands. That is, we can go all the way from sea level to snow-capped peaks. And therefore, you have all kinds of habitats, everything from, from coastal to rainforest to cooler mountain slopes to snow-capped mountain tops. And if you picture what an amazing place that would be for people to live in when, when our Hawaiian ancestors landed in the Hawaiian Islands, they found this stupendous set of, of ecological settings. You could find amazing things. If you needed huge trees for canoes, for voyaging, if you needed medicinal plants in the lower forest, if you needed um, rich fishing grounds to feed yourselves, if you needed wide wet valleys prime for agricultural development into taro lo'i. Um, it was just an amazingly alive universe to live in. If you're living in these places and if you pay attention to the world around you, you begin to notice the patterns in, in uh, the places that you live. And that turns you into a scientist. You find yourself observing um, the conditions on the land and the sea, what makes a place perfect for agriculture, how you can take the flow of water in a stream and spread it across the wide valley bottom, um, how to engineer the walls of your terraces so that water moves slowly down through each, through each uh, level without eroding the land and, and yet providing all the water that the, that the taro needs to live. When you work in a place like Hawaii and you're thinking about the challenges of saving native plants and animals, you think, well, what's the major threat to them? Is it development? You know, is it resorts going in or more and more residential areas? No, the main problem that faces Hawaiian plants and animals is non-native plants and animals, plants and animals that have been introduced to the Hawaiian Islands over the last two centuries or more and have begun to spread uncontrolled in the, in the forested ecosystems and other ecosystems around us. Currently, the Big Island Invasive Species uh, Program, the Big Island Invasive Species Committee, which is what I'm the manager of right now, we are heavily involved in dealing with a number of invasive uh, plant and animal species. Uh, our, probably our top two would probably be the Myconia calvensis, which is a very large leaf, uh, not, uh, invasive species plant, as well as uh, koki, which a lot of people are familiar with as the uh, tiny frog that makes a lot of noise. Uh, we try to deal with very small incipient or very what's called incipient, very small populations scattered around the Big Island and uh, try to either eradicate them or contain them from getting from one area to another. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very big job. It takes a, a lot of effort, a lot of money, uh, a lot of dedication. Personally, I feel it, it's a really, really important uh, job that many of the biologists across Hawaiian Islands are doing. Um, we have such a limited amount of resources here, especially our native ecosystem, our native plants, our native animals. Uh, that's all we have left. You know, Hawaii has been known as the in, uh, endangered capital of the world, which is something that we would like to change, but it's, it's true, we really are the endangered species capital of the world. 90% uh, of our organisms are found only here, nowhere else. If we lose them, they're gone for good. Uh, we have no way of bringing them back. Uh, what we would like to do is, is keep at least small sections of that intact somehow, some way, for future generations and for perpetuity purposes.